and continues to be an important issue in the St. Louis community. Coming up next on City Corner, we talk with Eric Clark, president of Loyola Academy. Please stay tuned. Welcome to City Corner. I'm your host, Melanie Adams. Today, we're joined by, by the president of Loyola Academy, Eric Clark. Thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Great. Well, I think the first thing we want to know is tell us a little bit about Loyola Academy. Well, Loyola Academy is a Jesuit nativity middle school for boys, um, six through eight, who have the academic potential to succeed at any of the college preparatory high schools, but because of uh, distressed backgrounds, neighborhoods, socioeconomic situations um, that be presents a pro problem for them to succeed. So we provide them that education for them to go on to succeed in high school. Well, one of the things I found really interesting when reading a little bit more about Loyola Academy is really the size. And I think mm -hmm. that's one of the things that would really shock people. Talk mm -hmm. a little bit about um, the size of your school and why you keep it to that size. Okay. Originally, Loyola Academy started out as being 60 students, mm -hmm. uh, 20 per class. Um, when I came on board in June of 2008, um, there was talk of starting a fifth grade. Uh, we decided against it, and what we decided to do in order to serve more students was to start a double class. Okay. So that year, we started a 6A, 6B class. Okay. Uh, then we had a seventh grade and then we had an eighth grade. So in that 6A, 6B, the total number of students were 30 okay. when we randomly divided them in half. So it was 15 in each class. So that gives us the number of 70. Um, we, will no, we will not have uh, more than one double class in the building at one time. So when those sixth graders, now they're eighth graders, when they graduate, then we'll start over with another double sixth grade class. So our total number is 70 now. Well, I think all of the educational research will show that really those smaller classes are what helps um, students be successful because you have a better student-teacher ratio. Exactly. And it almost becomes a family type of environment with only 70 um, exactly. students in the building. Without a doubt. Without a doubt, definitely. Well, and one of the other unique, I think, um, features of your school is really the longer school day. Mm -hmm. Um, so students don't just run out of the building at 2.15 when the bell rings, but there are some opportunities or actually requirements for them to stay. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Our doors open up at 7.30 in the morning with an optional breakfast. The actual day begins at 8 o'clock. The academic day ends at 3.20. At 3.20, um, the, the students are released to what we call an encore program. It's a co-curricular activity uh, program that allows the students to engage in co-curricular activities that they probably would not have the opportunity to, to do so. Mm -hmm. um, those activities are based on the expertise of our volunteers. Every person in the Encore program are volunteers. Oh, okay. So we have people that come over. We uh, have a young man who um, comes over and he teaches Mandarin Chinese mm -hmm. to students. We have uh, people that come over and they teach uh, a professional development class, how to tie a tie, how to shake their hands and look at someone in the eye. We have a cooking class, we have art class, we have a uh, choir, we have band and so on and so forth. But those, those programs are offered based on the expertise of our volunteers. So the, basically that's for an hour from 3.20 to 4.20. Mm -hmm. And then um, at 4.20 they have a 10 minute break. They, they go downstairs, have a snack, a break for 10 minutes and then at 4.30 they go back upstairs, retrieve their books and then they go into study hall. They remain in study hall until 5.40 p.m. So basically their day begins at 7.30 in the morning and it ends at 5.40 p.m. and that's Monday through Thursday. On Friday they are released after the academic day at 3.20. 
Well, and I think that's great that, it's, that um, volunteers run that Encore mm -hmm. program because that's something that wasn't um, really explained on the website. Mm -hmm. So how do people volunteer? So if, you have, if we have a viewer who's watching who says, mm -hmm. I'd love to participate in some way, how do they volunteer to work with your students during the Encore program? Um, they just call down to, to the school and they ask for our volunteer coordinator and uh, the, the secretary will put them in touch with them. And then they come in for an interview, the volunteer coordinator tries to see what they like to do, um, what, and what would they like to be involved in. And so um, they have to go through a program called Protecting Scotch Children, mm -hmm. which is just making sure that we provide a safe environment oh, for course, our students. Right. And then um, depending upon their time schedule, their time allotment, then they coordinate it with the volunteer coordinator and then we'll go from there. Right, and I think it's really great the way that you've embedded the after school programs into the regular school day so it right. almost becomes like a co-curricular exactly. as opposed to an extracurricular exactly. because a lot of those after school programs provide opportunities for students that they would normally never have. So That's instead true. of going home to an empty house, they're learning Mandarin or they're That's learning right. sports and doing other activities. Exactly. Well, I think your program really talks a lot to time on task. Mm -hmm. And that I think flows right into your summer program um, that you do with your rising sixth graders. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about those? Sure. Um, basically, we, we have an extended year. We are an extended year program. Um, Loyola Academy year begins in the middle of June, um, actually the third week in June. And um, that six week program goes through the end of July. That's for our incoming sixth graders, okay. those students, and basically um, they're on a probationary period okay. to see how well they will uh, fit in with the Loyola Academy family, if you What will. do they do during those six weeks? Are they taking an academic class? They are, right, they are taking academic class. It's very heavy on reading, mm -hmm. um, writing, and uh, arithmetic, okay. the three R's, if you will. <laughs> uh, but it's also a hands-on experience out in the public. A class goes on a field trip every oh. day. Oh, that's um, great. We, yeah. we make great use of the free things that are going on in the city. Okay. So they go on various field trips every day. One, one class goes on a field trip every day. Yeah. Um, so they have that academic piece, but also something different from um, the regular school right. year. Right, and I think we just showed some pictures of some of those field trips um, that the students actually go on. Okay. Now, so in addition to your rising sixth graders, mm -hmm. we also talked a little bit about you don't expect your seventh and eighth graders to just stay home for the summer. That's so what exactly are they doing? Right. They are required to participate in that uh, six-week program mm -hmm. also. However, um, other opportunities do exist out there for them. We are a Jesuit Nativity Middle School, so we have great ties with um, St. Louis University High School and DeSmet Jesuit High School and they run summer programs. So if a student is involved in a summer program held by one of those schools, they participate in that program instead of coming to our summer program. Right. Right. And one of the things I just want to make sure our viewers know is that it is an all-boys school. I think it that's one of the things we both know right. that and made that assumption that our viewers would know that, but it is an all-boys school. It's an all-boys so. school, yes. Well, and I think one of the things, in order to make a school like this successful, it's really important to have parental involvement. Yes. So I'm sure, do parents have to sign a contract? How are parents involved in their children's education um, at Loyola? We tell the parents that um, we are a trifold, if you will. Okay. It's Loyola Academy, it's parents, and it's God. And we're going to give our part, and I'm sure God's <laughs> going to give his part, so we need parents to give their part. Okay. Um, and so what we do, we require parents to um, have eight volunteer hours oh, okay. during the school year. Uh, we do realize some parents do work, um, and we have some parents that give more beyond eight right. hours, uh, but it's just an opportunity for them, once again, to know we are a small unit, and it's about family, and we have to support one another, and we want to make sure that the parents understand what we're trying to do for their students and want them to make sure that they have some... Um, skin in the game, right. if you will. Right. Now, do you find that you have a lot of siblings and a lot of families who will send um, all of their boys through Loyola? We do. We do. We have a good number of siblings that have come through uh, and that continue to come through Loyola Academy. Um, um, also, we get a number of students from referrals okay. from uh, the various administrators and teachers of um, the other schools around the area, whether they're public schools, private schools, um, parochial schools, charter schools. So. Right. 
Well, and the experience sounds so unique at Loyola, so why not make it a K through eight or kind of expand from that um, middle school model? That's a, that's a good point. Um, right now, what we're trying to do is make sure that we focus, we, we would love to have 100% of our families at the state, federal, free right. and reduced lunch level. Mm -hmm. um, that's our goal, but right now we have, we're about 78% of our families are at that level. Um, with that being said, we also like to have small classrooms. Right. Um, also, some of the backgrounds that some of our young men are coming from, I think it's very important that we keep the class size small because I can tell you now, a teacher at Loyola Academy, yeah, they'll be teaching their subject, but they're doing more than oh, just teaching their subject. So keeping it small um, is an opportunity for us to make sure that we go beyond the academics, trying to develop the, the, the whole student physically, mentally, emotionally, socially, spiritually. Um, so keeping it small, six through eight, um, 20 per class, um, 15 per class and a double class, it just allows us, it, we find it more advantageous to be six through. Eight. Well, and it also allows you to do a lot of those activities that with a mm -hmm. larger class you may not, um, may not be able to do. And I'm sure people want to know a little bit more about the application process mm -hmm. and how to get, um, how to find out more information mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. And also coming up after break, we're going to talk a little bit about your graduates and what they're doing. Um, so please stay tuned coming up after um, a short break. Yo, what up? It's your man Nelly, and you watch your STL TV. Experience the loop all day. In times of peace, in times of war, in times of joy, in times of pain, we need them, they need us, and we need you. The USO, until everyone comes home. What's a special interest? He says they run Washington. He said their groups are special interest in getting bills through Congress or the State House. So I said, I'm a Boy Scout, and our supporters help make a difference by educating elected officials on issues. Does that make me a special interest too? I guess my uncle thinks the Boy Scouts are helping to run Washington. Am I missing something? Learn more about American democracy by logging on to representativedemocracy.org. So, do you have any questions? What is your soup of the day? Uh, we have a mulligatawny soup. Oh, do you have any specials? We have a steak special today. Oh, how is that cooked? That's pan seared in the... Day. Does it come with a side dish? Is it grilled? Can I have it steamed? So, what do you recommend? What kind of pie do you have? You want an actor? Aren't you from Ohio? Any questions? Ask questions. For the 10 questions everyone should know, go to ahrq.gov. Welcome back to City Corner. Today, we're talking with Eric Clark, president of Loyola Academy. Well, before break, we talked a little bit um, about the application process, and you mentioned that you currently have 78% of your students on free and reduced lunch, and one of the things you're looking to do is to reach a goal of 100%. 
Well, talk a little bit about the application process. So if I were a parent and I had a young man who was in fifth grade and I wanted to get them enrolled in Loyola Academy, what would I have to do? Okay. First of all, we have um, what we call an admissions test. Okay. And basically, it's a survey battery based off of the Iowa Basic Skills Test. And uh, it allows us to see where the student currently is in his academic career. Mm -hmm. um, we feel that we're not able to serve a student who scores lower than more, th more than a grade level below okay. where he currently is. So first, uh, they will come and take that test. As a matter of fact, we have a test this Saturday, okay. uh, 10 o'clock. Um, it's from 10 to 12, basically. Um, so they come in and take the test. And then if a young man passes that test, and then we move on to the personal interview. We bring the student and their parent or guardian in, and we interview the student and then interview the parent alone, and trying to make sure that they understand what we're trying to do at Loyola Academy, making sure that they are uh, willing to do the things that we're requiring them to do um, and ask them to do. Um, see if they will fit into the program. Um, then once we do that, we get to the nitty gritty of um, the, the financials, right. tell them what we're about, who we're looking for, that sort of thing. Um, then after we do the interviews and we finish all of that up, then the admissions committee, get, uh, we sit down and then we make those tough decisions about who, would, who we think will fit into the program. Now how many opportunities do students have to um, take the test throughout the year? Right. So do you start in like March or is mm -hmm. it only in the summer? Mm -hmm. What we try to do is we would love the opportunity to just have one test, right. uh, <laughs> but nice. that, that never works. We right. never get the number of students that we need that right. meet that criteria. So what we do, we, we, I think our first test will be in late October, okay. and then we would have another one in maybe late February. Okay. Um, if we don't get that number, uh, matter of fact, this school year, this, for the 12, 13 school year, we will, we will be looking for 30 students. Right, because you're going to do the double, double grade, class. Right. So um, then we have uh, late February, and then depending upon what we have or what we do not have, we'll continue on until we reach that goal. So we love to have one or two tests, but like well, this I think special. it's good that you have them throughout the year because mm -hmm. people find out information at different times. So you exactly. may have a family who didn't find out about it until after a test mm -hmm. has already happened. So they have an sure. opportunity to take the next one. Sure. Well, one of the things you brought up really are the financials. Mm -hmm. um, so as a um, Jesuit institution, there's obviously tuition involved. So yes. can you talk about actually what it costs to educate a young man at Loyola and then what the family ends up being responsible for and how you make up that difference. Exactly. Um, to educate a child at Loyola Academy it costs thirteen thousand two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. However, no student pays thirteen thousand two hundred dollars at Loyola. We have students, uh, the families that range, the tuition range from twenty five dollars a month. I think the largest tuition that's paid is it might be four hundred and fifty dollars a month. Mm -hmm. um, and what we do, we, we base that information off of it's 3 to 5% of their uh, gross income. Okay. And so what we do, we require families to present W-2s mm -hmm. and um, tax returns right. um, just to uh, verify what we're trying to do and understand. And the tough part is uh, in today's economy where you tell a, a parent or a guardian that you make too much money right. and... Right. They it's like they right. don't they make, make money. Right. right, they don't make too much exactly. money. Exactly, right. and those are those tough, th tough questions, tough decisions that we have to ask and make. And um, but we feel that that's part of our mission to to serve the economically deprived. Right, and so where does that um, difference come in then? How do you raise that money? The rest sure, of it. Sure, sure. Um, about fifty-five percent of our um, money that uh, operational costs. Fifty-five percent of our budget comes from. Um, um, individual donors okay. or corporate donors, okay? 35% um, comes from um, various grants that we write. We, mm -hmm. a, we write a lot of grants. Um, about 8% comes from various events that we have, golf mm -hmm. tournaments, trivia nights, um, top shelf events, those right. sort of things. And then maybe about 1% comes from tuition, if okay. that. Uh, the unfortunate part with uh, 
private education with Loyola right. Academy. Uh, we don't have uh, bond issues. We don't right. get money from the state, that sort of thing. So we basically have to raise our, our money every year, you know. Um, but it's worth it. It's worth it seeing these young men uh, succeed. Well, I think it's great that you're not tuition driven because then you can make decisions not based on needing the funding from the tuition. That's true. Well, I think one of the things you mentioned, um, part of the purpose of Loyola in the middle school is then to create successful young men for the future. Yes. So your next role after having them at Loyola in middle school is to then get them into a great high school. So That's can you true. talk a little bit about your relationship with the area high schools and sure. getting your kids into the high schools? Sure. Uh, we consider ourselves uh, a seven-year program, three years at Loyola Academy. However, when a student um, moves on beyond Loyola Academy, we don't lose touch with that student. We want to make sure, and matter of fact, we tell the parents in those interviews that your son will make application to one of the many college preparatory high schools around the St. Louis area. So, of course, majority of those college preparatory high schools are very different from Loyola right. Academy. Um, so we have a full-time director of graduate support. Mm -hmm. His job is to make sure that those students are succeeding at the various high schools that they choose to go to. Mm -hmm. uh, we have students at St. Louis University High School, DeSmet Jesuit High School, CBC, MICDS, Westminster, John Burroughs. Uh, so we have those students that are doing well at these high schools, mm -hmm. but they also need to make sure that we are providing the graduate support. And that comes in the form of uh, the graduate support director going out, making sure that the students are doing well in their academics, right. um, going out and providing um, tuition support because right. the majority of these that. schools right. are tuition based. Mm -hmm. So we are out there raising money to make sure that we can provide tuition support for these families. Um, what we also do is require if those students are going to receive the graduate support from us, we want to make sure that they are meeting some criteria too, right. making sure that they have at least a 2.5 GPA uh, at their various high schools, making sure that they're giving at least 20 service hours back to Loyola Academy. Uh, and that can come in whether it's on their spring break, or on the weekend, or during the week. Opportunity for them to mentor or tutor their younger brothers who are still at Loyola Academy. Um, opportunity for them to, whether that's cleaning, making sure the building is, 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 is neat and, and clean. Um, and then the third criteria, basically, is to make sure that they're still, the family is still in um, uh, an economic situation, that they're still in need. Um, and so we still ask for the W-2s and the income tax okay. return. And so we, we follow those students through um, high school. And hopefully, whether they move on to a college university, a college or a university, or if they develop some sort of trade, whether that's Rankin or Vatterat or wherever, that they are successful people in life. Well, I think and one of the things you brought up, which I was remiss um, about not asking about earlier, was your service Saturdays, because I think that really caught my attention. And it's great that you require them to do the service even after they've left Loyola, but talk a little bit about your service Saturday program. Right. We definitely feel, and we tell the students, um, we're very blessed. You're, you're very blessed, even though y your situation might look bleak to right. you, but we still have to give back. We still have to bless others. We still have um, to not forget where we come, come from. So back. we we require students to do two service Saturdays mm -hmm. a quarter. So what they do, and they consist of various things. They, it might consist of going to um, a, a, a home where elderly people are and they might sing or they might engage in board games, that sort of thing. Um, they went to Forest Park for the uh, cl uh, at, for cleanup. I okay. think it was blast the trash or something okay. of that nature. Um, and going into neighborhoods, um, cleaning up areas also. So it's just an opportunity for them to realize that they have to give back and we will give back. And I think also just looking at the demographics, you have students from all over the St. Louis region yes. as well as Illinois. I want to say I saw some East St. Louis yes. numbers in there as yes. well. Yes. So you're not only working with St. Louis City kids, but right. kids who have a need throughout the region. That's right. We have uh, we serve over um, 24 zip codes. Mm -hmm. um, we're not a neighborhood school. Um, we we um, and there's more need um, for students all over, and mm -hmm. so we we provide them with that opportunity. Well, and then looking at your high school, so beyond high school, 
Um, you've had your first graduating class, and I think you said about seven are graduating from college. Right, seven have graduated from college as of May, uh, May this mm -hmm. year. Um, and what's really, really um, mind blowing and 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 heart warming is um, we just hired um, a young man who was from the first graduating oh. class of Loyola okay. Academy. Uh, we hired him, and he is going to be our history teacher this school oh, year. So. so you're building your own leaders. That's right. <laughs> we're, we're breaking that cycle of poverty through education, and now we have him back, and uh, he's going to do the same. Wonderful. Now, so do you have your high schoolers, I know you said they come back and volunteer at the school, mm -hmm. but you have them talking to the young men about this is what my high school experience is, is like, this is what you have to do to make sure you're successful in high school. So really serving as almost mentors. Exactly, exactly. When these young men, I mean, um, like I said, it's a tough transition coming from Loyola to these college preparatory right. high schools. So um, what better way to find out how it is by having one of their older brothers come back right. and say, hey, you can do it. This is what's happening. This is how it's going to be. And just telling them the real story. Right. So. Well, and I think one of the things that was really great about the website, I really enjoyed the video, and I don't know how mm -hmm. that that was a new video, but it was very, it reminded me almost of Morehouse men, for mm -hmm. lack of a better term, because mm -hmm. I think at the end they all say, I'm a Loyola right. man, and exactly. I mean, you could tell, I think, the pride really yes. in the students, yes. and what they were saying, and that you really are building character in the yes. students. without a doubt, without a doubt. So if you were to say one thing about to describe Loyola Academy, what would that be? I would say that Loyola Academy is a place that we mold boys into young men for others while at the same time breaking the cycle of poverty through education. Great. Great. Well, hopefully we wish you luck with your upcoming school year. I'm sure we'll continue to hear great things about Loyola Academy graduates, not only from high school, but from college as well. And I encourage all of our viewers who are interested in learning more about Loyola Academy and how they can enroll their young men to please check out their website, um, learn a little bit more about the institution. And again, thank you for watching City Corner and see you next time.